Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Kennedy Hawk from Marvel Champions Monthly Podcast. We're going to continue our new player series with a YouTube video. There'll be an accompanying article later this week all about building your first custom deck. So our last article and our last YouTube video, we went through the beginner game, the game that's boxed in Marvel Champions. You just unpack the packs for Spider-Man, Captain Marvel, and Rhino and play the game. Super fun, great entry. But the first thing you're going to want to do is build a hero deck. So there's lots of heroes available in Marvel Champions. There's the five in the core set, and there's four expansion heroes that have been released somewhere in the world. Uh, my copy of Black Widow actually just came in from Australia, so played a couple games with it today with physical cards. But we're going to focus on this new player series on the core set, so we're only going to consider the five core heroes for our deck building. And I just wanted to take you guys through the basics of building a deck. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to pick a hero. I'm going to do Iron Man for this, and that's because well, we talked about Captain Marvel, and we talked about Spider-Man in our first article, and our last YouTube video was all about Spider-Man, so we want to focus on someone new. I've got a lot of videos about Black Panther, and I will save Crimson for my buddy, uh, She-Hulk for my buddy Crimson, so I don't need to deal with her. So I'll play Iron Man instead, and I think he's got a really fun deck that we can play. So I'm going to get rid of these other heroes because I don't need to worry about them. We're not going to play a game in this, we're just going to build a deck and talk about the basics behind building a deck, and then if you check back later this week, I'll play a game with this deck. So this is a different deck than the one that appears in the article, so if you've read the article on building your first deck, you're going to build a different deck here. So you get two little deck options to choose from. So each hero's deck comes with 15 cards and an obligation set. Obligation set isn't a big deal for us. We're not going to consider looking through that when we're looking at building our first deck. So the first thing I would do is I would spread out my hero cards so I know what hero cards I get and how I deal with them. Whenever I'm playing Iron Man, I like to play super thematically and uh, sort of put my armor out all around me, kind of like making a little stick figure dude. I just, I just think it's hilariously awesome. So that's how I play. Um, but here is my Iron Man deck. So I've got seven pieces of armor. Nothing really to synergize around that with within the core set. Um, I've got Pepper Pots, who generates resources, so we'll be able to spend lots of money. I have Stark Tower that can also kind of generate resources by popping tech upgrades back into our hand. So if we saw any tech upgrades, which you might if you buy expansions and try some of those expansion cards, um, you could return those to your hand outside of the Tony Stark cards. The cards we're going to focus on today for this deck building exercise are Repulsor Blast and War Machine. So Repulsor Blast is deal one damage to an enemy, then discard five cards at the top of your deck. For each printed energy resource, you will get to deal two additional damage to that enemy. So this could be an 11 damage attack for, for one cost. Pretty dang good. So when we're deciding on what cards to include, we're probably going to lean towards energy cards. Next thing is War Machine. So War Machine is an uh, ally. One thwart, two attack, four health. We're going to focus on that four health. We can keep this guy on the board for a long time. And if we can make him as efficient as possible, that's going to be really good. So the other thing I would consider before even picking an aspect and start dealing with those cards is to inspect your hero slash alter ego. So Tony Stark has nine hit points, a hand size of six. He can get like basically a hand size of seven with his ability and three recovery. So pretty low on hit points. We should remember that. Next, Iron Man has two thwart, one attack, and one defense. So there weren't a lot of thwarting cards in his deck. In fact, I think there's sort of two cards that help you with thwart. This helmet can remove one from each threat, and this arc reactor can ready Iron Man. Um, that's all great and dandy, but you're going to be relying on Iron Man's thwart to do your thwarting. So when we pick an aspect, if we can pick one that does a little bit of thwarting for us, that's going to help us out. Especially because on Iron Man's size, here's another thing we need to pay attention to, his hand size is 1 at the beginning of the game. So until we get these tech upgrades into play, it's going to be really hard to flip and keep cycling through our deck. The last thing I wanted to point out, I shouldn't have put all these tech upgrades away. There's a really important thing to think about. Um, a lot of these cards are better if you have the aerial traits. There's two gloves that do two damage instead of one. This removes a threat from each scheme. This does eight damage instead of four, and we get aerial using these boots, but we need mental resources to do that. So we're gonna put these rocket boots up here to remind us that we need to start thinking about mental resources as well when we're building our deck. So four aspects to pick from. Justice, protection, leadership, and aggression. I am gonna build a leadership deck because, well, it's my favorite. 
Also, I think that it offers a really unique thing for Iron Man. So Iron Man, like I said, we're going to spend a lot of our early game in Tony Stark form. So we need to have allies do some of the work for us at the beginning of the game. And we can get those allies and power them up in leadership. So I'm going to quickly throw away any cards from expansions because we're going to build with the core set only today. And as you can see, so Captain America's deck, if you're looking for more leadership cards, comes with a ton of leadership cards that are really good. So throwing all those back into this bag, although I probably shouldn't because that's the basic um, cards bag, but we'll figure it out here in a minute. You can see there's a ton of cards to choose from um, once you get those expansions. But like I said, for our first, first uh, deck building session here as a group, we're gonna only use one. So I'm gonna bring these basic cards out too. So I'm gonna walk you guys through my deck building process. Everybody does things differently. But what I do is I pick my aspects and the first thing I do is go through the basic cards and pick cards that I put in pretty much every deck. Avengers Mansion, staple card, um, exhaust Avengers Mansion to draw a card in solo or choose a player and draw a card in multiplayer. That's another thing I should have mentioned. When you're building a deck, think about tweaks you might make if this was a multiplayer deck instead of a solo deck. In a solo deck, your deck needs to be able to attack, it needs to be able to thwart, and it needs to be able to like stay alive. But in multiplayer, you can count on other people to do those things. So you can say, I'm going to be a thwart specialist, and my buddy's going to be an aggression specialist, and we're going to make sure we can take down the villain as a team. So I'm going to build this deck as if it was a solo deck. So I used to be high on having two Avengers Mansions, so I could get one earlier in the game, but I've recently gone down to one and one, one Avengers Mansion, one Helicarrier. I always include these three basic resources. There's one hero I make an exception on that for, and that's Black Panther, but even then, I usually still include these three basic uh, resources. Just double mental, double energy, double physical. Five cards right there. I also always include Mockingbird, and almost always include Nick Fury. So you can see Mockingbird enters play, stuns the enemy that buys you a whole turn of having to defend, and she can thwart for you. Nick Fury just create utility card that can do everything. So right there, we've got 15 plus 7, 22 cards in our deck before we've even gone to our aspect. So at this point, I want to start looking at our aspect cards. And what I want to do is make sure, like I said, that we can maintain thwart, we can maintain attack, and we can maintain defending. And it looks like I shuffled these cards, so that's cute. I'm just going to lay these out into piles so I can look at all the cards, and then we'll zoom in so you guys can sort of read the cards with me, and I'll go over them with you as well. So in leadership in the core set, you've got a couple options here for allies. So right now we have War Machine is an ally, Mockingbird, and Nick Fury. But leadership is all about using those allies as much as you can. So I usually include quite a few allies. So in our deck, we're going to include Maria Hill. She's all around good. She's pretty much an auto occlude in um, leadership, unless you're doing some like Avengers tribal deck. She also has that mental resource. And I should have done this before. When I uh, pile cards, so here I have cards that want lightning bolts. I have cards that want energy or uh, mental. And this one doesn't really require a certain resource type, just ally support, which is what we're getting out of leadership. So I'm going to put him away. But I like to put my cards out so I know how many cards do I have that support each of these different requirements, we'll call them. I'm even counting Iron Man's uh, upgrades, although I don't like to do that because, you know, ideally I want all of those to be in play. Um, but if push comes to shove, they could be used. So right now we've got six mental resources to trigger our boots, six energy resources to trigger Repulsor Blast, and there's mental resources on the boots, and one wild. So we're going to keep going, including allies. We could include the Vision, but he's just going to soak up more lightning bolts. We're not going to do that for now. We're going to include Hawkeye. Hawkeye is kind of interesting. He's sort of a, a weird pick because he's really good in scenarios where the villain has lots of minions, but he's not as good in scenarios like Rhino where there's not a ton of minions. You saw that last game, we barely saw minions. So. A lot of times I start with him in my deck. If I decide he's not doing enough for me, I'll pull him out and put something else in from my sideboard. But I keep him in my sideboard because he's just a generally useful character. For us, we're going to keep him because he's a lightning bolt. Lightning bolts are good. Um, Triskillian, I think, is a really good card. I don't think it's a really good card in an Iron Man deck because we're going to be using... We have low hit points, right? We're going to be using those allies to block a lot until we get our upgrades out and have enough health to be able to soak up whatever attacks come our way. So we're not going to include Triskelion. I'm going to reject that one right away. Um, I am going to include 
three copies of Inspired. The reason I'm including these is these are really effective on allies with high hip, um, hit points. So you can see Hawkeye can become a 2-2 two -two with three health, so that can become sixth thwart over three turns. I'm happy with that. War Machine, same thing. Um, so anything that can pump those allies up as they stick around is going to be really important. Um, I am going to include three copies of Lead by the F Lead from the Front. The reason I'm doing this is Tony Stark has a pretty cool combo here. Um, he has oh, where is it? Maybe it's a I think it's a science resource. Oh, I'm a liar. It must be an energy resource. This arc reactor. Once per turn, you're able to ready Iron Man once you get this into play. So if you play Lead from the Front to get plus one attack, now you can attack twice or plus one thwart. Now you can thwart for six. That's pretty crazy. So, pretty good card. And again, lightning bolt resources. We like lightning bolts. Lightning bolts are good. So I'm gonna put um, these extra cards down here just so I can know how many of everything is in my deck. I seem to have lost my physical cards. I think I put them in here. Yeah, let me pull those out again. Embarrassing. Sorry, guys. All right, just lightning bolts left now. And we'll put this other mental one back here. So we've got eight mental resources total. We've got 13 energy, one wild, and eight physical resources. So we got to look at the rest of the cards we have as options. Um, if we looked at our leadership cards, and we'll look at that in a second to evaluate whether or not we want this power of leadership, I'm always going to include two copies and make the call, sometimes three. I think with Iron Man, it might actually be a good excuse to run three of these. So I think we actually will. Get ready is really good for getting double use out of those allies, but as Iron Man, once we get up and running, we're not going to need to use those allies to block. So if we spread those allies out over multiple turns, that's probably okay. So I don't think get ready has a ton of value in our deck, especially since we don't need that resource type. So at this point, I'm going to group everything up and count how much we have. We have 33 cards, so we got lots of room left. Um, I wanted to take a peek at our leadership cards and talk about something here. So. Our leadership cards have pretty good costs on them. You can see there's lots of cards that cost two. Three, two, two. There's three copies of Lead from the Front. Um, there's three copies of Inspired, three copies of Make the Call. So I'm deciding if I need to bring this power of leadership or not, right? I want to see how many times that's going to actually trigger a double resource. And it does quite a few times. It's five cards that this would act as two resources on. My argument is you're better off having better cards in your deck if that's only going to trigger on five cards. Now, it will trigger if Make the Call summons a leadership ally, but if Make the Call summons Mockingbird or someone like that, you're not going to be able to use Power of Leadership with it. So I don't think it's that good in a core set Iron Man deck. Now, once you start getting more Avengers cards, you put Vision and some other people in, that card becomes dramatically better. So there's seven leadership cards we rejected. We've got room for seven more basic cards in our deck. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to include Lightning Bolts. So, um, Iron Man is not lacking in attack, but we will put two copies of Haymaker in our deck. Um, I think we're also going to put three copies of Emergency, and this might be somewhat controversial. I was on the train of Emergency is the worst card ever for a long time. But Emergency is actually really good in solo, especially with Iron Man. Imagine you draw your opening hand. So Emergency says, when the villain would scheme, reduce the amount of threat placed on the scheme by one. So you're going to be sitting in an alter ego form at the beginning of the game a lot. And you might draw a hand of seven cards that you play two tech upgrades and you can have one card left in your hand. If you keep Emergency as that card, it's going to let you sit in alter ego longer before you're forced to flip, which I think is really powerful for Iron Man. Even when you're up and running and you have all seven armor pieces out, I'm wanting to play as many Repulsor Blasts and things as I can, so I'll still flip over and use this Futurist action, and Emergency is really just like an, an enabler for that. Um, I think I'm actually going to include a third copy of Haymaker, and I'm going to put one copy of First Aid in here. It's one more mental resource, but like I said, our hit points are nine. Until we get fully up and running with health, it's going to be really hard to stay at full health. And even once we get all our upgrades up that give us plus HP, we're still only healing three if we decide to go recover. So we're going to need a little bit of help with recovery if we need it. So bingo bango, that's our deck. Um, tune back in in a couple minutes and I'll show you how you build this deck in Marvel CDB. 
Hey everybody, welcome back. I got our deck all laid out here so I can see exactly what's in it when I'm building this deck in Marvel CDB. A lot of times that's what I do is I will build a deck in Tabletop Simulator or I'll spread my cards out all over my kitchen table, drive my kids crazy, build a deck, make sure I know exactly what's in the deck, put it into a deck box. I'll come up to the office later that night after everybody's in bed, put the deck in Marvel CDB. That way I have it preserved and I can you know take notes on it, know how well it performs, see some cool statistics on it. So I thought I would show you guys how this Marvel CDB app works. So you're gonna to wanna to go to marvelcdb.com. You'll click my decks at the top here. You can see I have a ton of decks in progress or that are published. What you're gonna do is you're gonna click new deck up here at the top. You'll be able to choose from all the heroes that you have added to your collection. I have all of them added. So I'm gonna choose Iron Man. Up here, this is pretty nifty. You can put a pack selection in. So since I said we're gonna use core set only, I could remove all of the non core set options from the packs that I have options for. And now I'm gonna go ahead building my deck. So it's automatically, since I chose Iron Man, gonna include all of my Iron Man cards. But under basic cards, I had a Mockingbird, I had a Nick Fury, I had three emergencies, I had three Haymakers, I had one first aid. I had all three energies. You can see I basically included every basic card that's out there. I only had two, two first aids instead of three, and I only brought, uh, I brought no tenacity. So already before I even get to leadership cards, I'm at 30, 29 of my 40 cards. You can choose the leadership tab, and you can sort by different subtypes, all sorts of things. You can click on it again to suppress it. I thought you could, maybe you can't. Um, I thought you could click on this again and it would make it everything. Apparently it won't. Joke's on me. Um, so I'm going to do three copies of Inspired because that's what we said we were going to do. We had a ton of events. We had um, three copies of Lead from the Front, three copies of Make the Call, and we brought some allies. We brought Hawkeye and Maria Hill. So you can see we now have 40 cards. This is no longer red. You can put notes in here. So this is where if you would publish the deck, it would um, put all this information out for people to see in the public. Until I publish a deck, a lot of times I'll put notes about like game recordings in here. So I'll say, played my first game against Rhino. It went like this, loss. Played my second game against Rhino. I still lost because I'm really bad. Played my third game against Rhino. I finally won by attrition. Things like that. Um, so there's, there's some pretty cool features in here. You can like call card names out. So you can say, you can say this, pound sign, Iron Man deck. And now when this is published, people will be able to click on that and it'll take them to a link of the Iron Man card. Or you can say, this Iron Man deck uses energy resources to maximize Repulsor Blast. So we'll, we'll show you what that looks like here in a minute. You can name your deck. This is my test deck. So you guys will be able to see this deck on there and downvote it because it has a really bad name. But now you'll know where the name came from, so jokes on everybody else. So you can save your deck. Boom, it's saved. You'll be able to come to it later. So now here you can see this is an Iron Man deck. If I click it, it'll take me to Iron Man. It maximizes a repulsor blast, all sorts of things. Let's go back into edit mode so you guys can see what was there. Working really slow today. <laughs> all right, so there's lots of things you can do here. You can do a card draw. Um, so you can say, okay, I want to see what my opening hand might be. Click Alter Ego Hand. Okay, cool. It's not showing me this last card, but it's something. Um, and it'll give you all sorts of odds, right? Odds 15, 28, 39. You can um, click one and say Redraw Selected. Redraw Selected, that means it'll discard that one and pop a new card in here. For some reason, the images are running really slow today, but normally it'll show you your whole hand size. So you can like do test draws of your opening hand and all sorts of stuff like this. I'm a data nerd, so I really like these charts tabs. So here you can see my cost curve. I've got three cards that cost four or more. That's like Avengers Mansion, um, War Machine, stuff like that. Um, five cards that cost three or more. So Hawkeye, Helicarrier, things like that. Um, 13 cards that cost two, 10 cards that cost one, and six cards that cost zero. It'll also show you your distribution of resources. So you can see we have 17 energy resources. I did make one deck here where I just threw all of the energy resources in because I thought that was pretty funny. And you can get way higher than 17. So that Repulsor Blast is hopefully hitting, you know, eight to, or I guess nine to 11, like every time you play it. But we're pretty good at 17. We've still got 13, so we'll be able to go aerial a lot and get all those bonuses from Tony's upgrade. We're not just relying on Repulsor Blast. And we have 12 physical resources, mainly because 
we're going to include strength. We're going to include Mockingbird. I mean, maybe we we get rid of Inspired or something like that to cut back on strengths, but I think those are worth it for now. It'll also show you your factions. So I have 15 cards that are from Iron Man's Hero Deck, 11 cards from Leadership, and 14 basic cards. So more basic cards than Leadership cards. It'll show you your history. So if you save multiple versions of this, it'll show you what changes from version to version. That's pretty cool. So if I came back in here and wanted to update this to version, once I publish it, it'd be version 1.0, I could make version 1.1. It'll tell me what changes I made. So that's pretty cool. Um, so finally, we're gonna save this deck again. And we're gonna publish it. So you guys can all go here and see this deck. Check out this deck build on YouTube. So later I'll put a link in there that shows where this deck build video is. But I'm gonna save it. You can put different tags on it. And now people will be able to go see this deck on Marvel CDB. Iron Man, this is my tech, my test deck. There's a ton of decks in here. If you go to deck lists, you can actually see a lot of really cool decks. So you can see like the most popular deck lists. There's a couple by Zach Bunn. Uh, there's one by me. That's not really popular. That must just be like recently popular. I think that would be under recent. Um, you can go to like the Hall of Fame decks. These are the ones that have like the most upvotes of people trying them out. So there's lots of ones you can try out in here. They're really, really fun. Lots of good ones by Brian V and Dr. Zero Zero. So definitely recommend those. Um, but yeah, pretty cool resource you can use for storing all your decks. So like obviously, like I said, when I go to my decks, it shows dozens of decks. You can see there's not a ton of She-Hulk ones because that's Crimson's problem. Um, and you can tag them with all sorts of different things. So like the ones we talked about on our podcast or the ones that are aggression or the ones that are all about allies. All sorts of cool things you can do on marvelcdv.com. So definitely check them out. Um, there you can, you can contact these guys on Discord. So you'll be able to give them feedback if you see an error, all sorts of things. But really cool feature, especially for newer players as you're trying to learn things. You can also figure out what cards are in what pack. There's other resources you can use for that, like HallHeroesLCG.com, but this is one way you can check, hey, I really want to get a copy of Inspired. Is that in Miss Marvel's pack? Nope, it's not. It's in the core set, and you'll be able to figure it out while you're building your deck. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, make sure to like, subscribe, and give us feedback on how these videos are going for you, especially newer players. We want to know if we're helping you out and if there's topics you specifically want us to cover.